Hello, it's Scott Manley here. This afternoon, SpaceX suffered a serious anomaly with a test that they were performing at uh, in Florida. Uh, it appears that they were testing their Dragon 2 capsule that had been recovered from the ocean after its trip to the space station, and a Draco thruster, or Super Draco thruster most likely, failed in some way that resulted in the destruction of the capsule and, well, some rather ugly orange smoke being seen all around. The orange smoke is significant because that means it's dinitrogen tetroxide, which is nasty, nasty stuff. They were probably releasing also hydrazine or UDMH in the process as well. Point is, this is bad. I I'm not going to be surprised if this particular failure pushes out SpaceX's launch, or crewed launch to the space station until next year. So they were planning to reuse this capsule after its recovery to demonstrate the abort system. The abort system on the SpaceX Dragon 2 uses the Super Draco thrusters. Now there are eight Super Draco thrusters on a Dragon 2 capsule. They're arranged in pairs and they are in armored enclosures so that if there is some catastrophic failure, uh, they still have other ones operating and the capsule doesn't get destroyed. So clearly, that didn't work. That didn't save the system. I mean, I've heard that the capsule is literally in pieces, but this has not been substantiated. Uh, and interestingly enough, Elon Musk hasn't commented. Usually he's quite, you know, quite open about these things. So the fact that he's not said anything is probably not a good sign. So anyway, yeah, uh, obviously their plan was in July to reuse this capsule on a crew abort test, and then they would actually fly to space on a, a fresh capsule. Now, I'm not sure what's gonna happen. They're obviously gonna have to investigate the site, figure out what went wrong. This will, this might push out their crew abort test, but it's entirely possible that they just have another capsule and they get that ready to do another crew abort test. So I don't know what's gonna go on there. Um, either way, I mean, between SpaceX and Boeing, Boeing is obviously the other company that's involved in the commercial crew program, they also had delays because they are of their crew abort system. It's interesting to note that both the Dragon 2 and the Starliner use abort systems that use liquid fuel. Now most abort systems that have been used in rockets in the past have used solid fuel rockets. I mean we've obviously seen this happen with the Soyuz last year but the Apollos used that and obviously the, the, um, the Mercury, the Gemini have had ejector seats as well. So I think in the next few days we're going to see a lot of theories, a lot of speculation, and there will probably be a lot of misinformation from people who want to capitalize on this or minimize this. I mean, obviously, you've got the SLS uh, fans, the supporters, who will once again try to paint this as an example for of why commercial crew program is failing, despite the fact that SLS is obviously taking a long time. Uh, we will see people that just don't like the fact that they are, you know, liquid fueled launch abort system. This has never been done before. You're going to see people that are worried about additive manufacturing because they like their lathes and milling machines. So point is, there's going to be a lot of speculation and we will get the information over time. But right now, it's pretty likely that we will not see US crews launching on US rockets until 2020 now. If it happens before then, that's great. But I'm just saying worst case scenario, that's what you should be prepared for. So yeah, the Super Draco thrusters, they're set up in pairs. They run on hypergolic fuels. They're throttleable down to like 20%. Originally, SpaceX was talking about using these to land the spacecraft as well. But right now, they are only used for the, the launch abort scenario. So they weren't even used during the DM-1 mission. The, the spacecraft obviously landed in the ocean and then was brought back. It's entirely possible that the, being in the water somehow damaged that or affect these systems. It's possible that being in the water damaged something else downstream from it. So, we, again, we really don't know, but the, the drag, Super Draco thrusters, despite the first flight being on DM-1, they've been tested for like, you know, seven years since 2012. So, it's not like this is some new technology that's completely untested. This has had hundreds, maybe even thousands of test firings. So to have this fail this close to a major like test like this 
is unfortunate. I mean, like maybe if they hadn't done this as a test, maybe if SpaceX had just decided to go with a fresh capsule for the abort test, we might never have seen this. So yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. Best case scenario is it turns out that this was a failure in ground service equipment or some sort of test protocol that won't affect the main mission. It's possible this is a failure that entirely resulted from the landing and immersion in water, but it's also possible that there is some fundamental flaw, some fundamental weakness in the design or the manufacturing. Perhaps, you know, 3D printing of these high pressure rocket nozzles just isn't ready for prime time. Who knows? We'll find out more, but watch this space. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.